Sorry to apologize for the slight mix-up. Mr. Johnson also received his plaque and gold award from Sir Carly. And I can recall in 1993, along with the parliamentary representative for St. John, Mr. Edward Thomas, we went up through Cloche and Belvedere seeking water areas where we could set up a dam to ease the drought and the scarcity in the lowland areas. And Mr. Johnson is not only a good engineer, he's also a good mountaineer. During the event, which was chaired by Nawasa's General Manager Christopher Husbands and attended by Works Minister Joseph Gilbert and Tourism Minister Glennis Roberts, the CWWA also recognized former presidents of the association. The next CWWA conference, to be held in 2011, will be in Guadeloupe. <laughs> it is with great pleasure we hand over the baton for the CWWA annual conference to next year's host, Guadeloupe. In other news, government is being urged to consider making insurance education part of the school curriculum. That appeal was made by the executive director of Newham Insurance, Kenny John. Mr. John says insurance is usually considered as a condition that someone imposes as a result of wanting something else. He says if a customer wants to buy a car or secure a loan, he will take out a policy only because it is mandatory. He believes that if the importance and dynamics of insurance are taught in schools, Grenada will become a nation that makes more informed financial choices. Take for example principles of business. Um, some might call it different now, but in my day it was principles of business when it was taught. Mm -hmm. I do not remember any significant part of it being taught about the virtues of insurance in general and how it protects. Yeah, it was a small paragraph. It's, it's, a, it's a, literally a small paragraph, you yeah, know. It's, it's almost... So um, afterthought. A, afterthought. Oh, by the way, yes, yes, you need insurance. Yeah, you need to know about and, this. Um, <laughs> so when you, when you go through, you learn about economics and there's so much, um, you know, to get that economics question answered. There's so much of it. Why not develop a model where you, you have have a scenario and then you have to identify what insurances does this person need you never see that as a as a question in POB for exams mm -hmm. that is true. you never do and 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 so how how it impacts on our lives and the importance we need to look at our curriculums mr. John says some lobbying was done on the matter but nothing ever came of it the association at one time lobbied a number of institutions um, the TAM CC SGU to try and have an insurance module as part of its management courses it never really got off the ground but there have been discussions mm -hmm. and so it is important um, that at some level and even though we approach those institutions it's important therefore that that probably the Ministry of Education for example and speak to their members when they have the regional meetings to say what do we need to to give our the tools we need to give our citizens what information do we need to embed in them so that they can become more worthy citizens mm -hmm. more productive citizens responsible responsible citizens yeah. Strengthening strategic budgeting in Grenada to encourage the efficient and effective allocation of scarce resources. That was the focus of a one-day budget working session on Thursday. It was undertaken by the budget unit in the Ministry of Finance. The session was conducted by Mr. Mark Sillins of Carter and Ms. Kim Fedrick, the Chief Budget Officer of the Ministry. Their presentations covered exercising fiscal discipline, establishing performance measures, focusing on results, 
monitoring and reconciliation and creating ways of savings. The Ministry of Finance is also planning to hold a series of budget consultations with sector organizations and the public. The process is part of preparations for compilation of the 2011 budget. There is a concern that young people are not sufficiently aware of the benefits of long-term savings. This issue was addressed by Mr. Larry Lawrence of First Caribbean International. He was a guest on the GIS Price Morning as part of the continued series marking Financial Intelligence Month. Mr. Lawrence says young people must be taught to save for a rainy day. But because of how we are as commercialized these days, you find that it's difficult to have or foster a savings attitude and uh, the younger folks. Uh, my big daughter, for example, uh, she is challenged to keep money in her hands. You know, so I do know, and it's really because of what is out there, the commercials which uh, entice you to spend. Uh, so yes, it is more challenging to save uh, now as opposed to before. Because there is a rainy day. There always would be a rainy day. And uh, she says it's just as relevant, if not more relevant, but probably just as relevant. There is that rainy day. There is the need to save now so that you can achieve what you want in the future. And if there is not that habit that's fostered now, such as, for example, at First Care, we have the show Start Account, which encourages young persons to save so that they can have that dream that become a reality in the future. Residents of two communities in St. Andrew are getting some relief from flooding with the construction of storm drains in these areas. Details from Karine Moraine, the Public Relations Officer in the Ministry of Works. The Eastern Main Road Division of the Ministry of Works is engaged in the construction of drains in Leicester and Castine, St. Andrew, that will eventually relieve these communities with the problem of flooding. Supervising the two projects is a road officer, Mr. Elvis Joseph. He explains how the community will benefit from the construction of the storm drain at Leicester. You may hear me say a storm drain. It's referred to as a storm drain because of the amount of storm water that comes down from the hills when it rains excessively. Okay? So this drain will carry water from the hills of Ladig, Granbra, Tarut into the Great River. Usually there is there is flooding in the area because the drain, the capacity of the drain was too small. There would usually be excessive debris and stuff in the drain, so the construction will cause the water to flow much more smoothly and dissipate quicker when it rains heavily. Meanwhile at Castine in Budge Grove, Mr. Joseph says two scopes of work are in progress. It includes a retaining wall to prevent further undermining of the road. That retaining wall is being constructed to save the road. Before the excavation was done, the road was being undermined by the, the, the same drain that we did coming down from Castine Junction. When the water gets to here, it did some undermining of, of the road. So we had to do the retaining wall to protect the road from cracking and breaking away. And we will subsequently turn the drain down the hill to the river so that um, we wouldn't have any further erosion there. Two box drains are also being constructed in Castine. Mr. Curtis Mitchell is the contractor. Right now we are approaching a drain that will help, eventually will help the people in the lower level of the Castine from being flooded. So we are about to remove the topsoil, the swampy area in the drain, then we'll backfill and compact the drain area before we pour our concrete. And we'll do a massive drain there in order to accumulate the amount of water that they receive around this area when rain falls. There are many other projects like these ongoing in different parts of the island as the Ministry of Works continues its work in maintaining the nation's infrastructure and creating much needed employment in the construction sector. I am Karen Morin, Public Relations Officer of the Ministry of Works, Physical Development and Public Utilities. You're watching the GIS News Hour. We'll be right back.
degrees of action. Spice Sports Rhythm and Food Festival, October 9th and 10th. Back to back matches with West Indian and English cricket legends Devon Malcolm and Joel Garner. Saturday night music and food. Local and regional bands, including Antigua's Dread on the Ballheads, featuring Kutley Ambrose, Richie Richardson, and Heat Wave. On Sunday night, win Big Box in the National Bingo. All the action at Progress Park. Daily entrance fee, $10. Come for the cricket. Come for the music. Come for the food. Stay, Stay for, for the fun. fun. Spice, Sports, Rhythm and Food Festival. And Cricket Classics, October 9th and 10th, Progress Park. See you there. Spice, Sports, Rhythm and Food Festival. An initiative of the Ministry of Tourism with support from the Green International Lottery Authority. Grenlec, Netherlands Insurance, Spice Isle Marina, Camper and Nicholson, GBM, St. George's University, the Green and the Board of Tourism, Floor Green and the Limited, the Green and the Bureau is Limited, Liat and British Airways. Digicel brings together 23 nations with one goal. Winning the Digicel Caribbean Cup. Celebrate the best in Caribbean football. This is the Caribbean Cup. Caribbean football. Check the press for details. Customers at the post office and postal, postal substations stole the spotlight on Friday Customer Appreciation Day. It was part of activities commemorating World Postal Day. Details from Abigail McIntyre. When you walked into the Grandin's post office, staff members would greet you at the door and serve drinks and light snacks while your business is being seen about. It was Customer Appreciation Day for the Grenada Postal Corporation as part of activities leading up to World Post Day on October 9. Senior Customer Service Representative at the post office, Mrs. Paula St. Louis, said it was a pleasure given back to customers. Oh, well here in Grandin's, we give the best treatment. We honor each person that comes into that door because, I mean, this is our bread and butter that is walking in and we cherish them all. So we, they, we, today we're taking a special effort in giving them a little something to show how we appreciate them, you know. And so um, as we celebrated World Post Day, we are taking that opportunity. Yeah. Director of the Grenada Board of Tourism, William Joseph, was one of the customers who experienced the treatment and shared his views on it. Well, uh, the first thing is that they're all my friends and um, I'm very um, surprised at all this generosity, you know. So I think it's good, you know, it was feel um, important sometimes and um, so good service and um, good treatment. I think it's great. <laughs> On Saturday 9, post office workers will join together to celebrate World Post Day. Mrs. St. Louis assures the public that it's going to be a grand occasion. Tomorrow we have in, um, the post office throughout Grenada, Caracol and Petit Martinique is coming together to celebrate. We have in, um, um, a service, we have in, um, some of the staff singing and what have you. So people like Ms. Peterkin will be getting an award. You understand? So I know it will be a grand time and we'll be marching in the street, not marching, we'll be dancing in the street um, under the thing with the PBC boys and you know we're going to have a good time. For the GIS News Hour, I am Abigail McIntyre reporting.